All right, hello, welcome to Human Central Nervous System. We're going to talk about the Human Central Nervous System, Peripheral Nervous System today. This is going to be, of course, on the test. So, we'll start with the simple one. We'll grab a brain. We've got a brain here. Actually, we'll just grab this brain because this brain's sitting here. All right, parts of the brain that we care about. We have the frontal lobe, the front part of the brain. Then we have parietal lobe. It's separated by this central sulcus. It's a line in the center that separates out the, the frontal from the parietal lobe. Then we have the occipital lobe back here. We have the temporal lobe. Now, temporal lobe has a lateral sulcus separating. So central sulcus, lateral sulcus. Remember that central sulcus? We talked about it when we were talking about where the primary motor neuro nerves um, where, where the primary sensory nerves, you know, they are in the precentral gyrus, grooves just in front of the central sulcus, and the postcentral gyrus, which are just behind the central sulcus. So sensory is pulsed, it's in the back on the parietal lobe. Uh, motor is precentral gyrus, which is in the frontal lobe. All right, all right, next part longitudinal fissure. Look at that, huge crack right down the middle. Longitudinal fissure. Then we have, um, also inside the longitudinal fissure is a membrane, the cerebri. Uh, it's not as visible on this because we can't quite see a membrane there. But if we go over here to the sliced brain model, we can see it as a white line right down the middle. This is a membrane that separates right and left lobes of the cerebrum. See the white line. Okay. So we've gone through the major lobes. We should now be on um, the, let's see, we should be able to get to the, just checking my list here. All right, next part, corpus callosum. While we're talking about the uh, parts of the brain, right and left lobes, corpus callosum, right here. It's all the interconnections, all those little pathways that go in between the right and left hemispheres of the brain. All go right through there. Um, then we have the hypothalamus. Easy way to find the hypothalamus. Find the pituitary, follow it up. Hypothalamus. While we're there, hey, check out the pituitary gland. It's hanging down. Guess what? This one's pink, the other one's pink. It's hanging down at the bottom of the brain model. It's pretty obvious. Hypothalamus is where it connects. Um, let's see. Optic chiasm. All right. If we were to put the brain back together. Take a look at it. Down in here, above the pituitary gland, is where the optic nerves cross. They make an X. You can kind of see it in there. Now, if you want to get a really good view, we'll go back to our sliced brain model. Flip down. There it is. You can see the optic nerves cross. There. Optic chasm. That's a pretty obvious one. It's a big X right there in the middle. All right, so we did optic chiasm. We'll just take a look at our list, see what else we got. Okay, superior inferior colliculus. Pop these things out, take a look at the back. Superior inferior colliculus. If you get a good view in there, it's these little round things that look like two little butts. They're on the back. And those are the superior inferior colliculus. Go to the front, We've got this big fat thing on the front of it. Pons. And below that is the medulla oblongata. Bonds, medulla oblongata. Then we have the cerebellum. I pulled the cerebellum off. It's usually resting right back here. We have the cerebellum. Notice it doesn't have the sulci, but the others do. And it has the arbor vita, the tree of life. That's the cerebellum. All right, now we're going to go for ventricles of the brain. As we talked about, there are these air spaces inside the brain. These models make a hard time to describe them. The ventricles of the brain. I'll show you the ventricles here. It's totally counterintuitive. You count to four, but you, only, but you skip two. We've got the lateral ventricles. They go here all the way down to here. We have the third ventricle, and it's in the middle. And then we have the fourth ventricle. So lateral, third, fourth. And then we also have the aqueduct that connects them. 
the aqueduct, the cerebral aqueduct right here, connects them. Then lastly, we have the choroid plexus. This is where cerebral spinal fluid is made. It's the pink ridges. Each ventricle has it. Here we have it in the third ventricle. Third ventricle here in the middle. We have the ones in the lateral ventricles. And we have the ones in the fourth ventricle. They're in pink. When I have them on the test, I'll make it obvious. It'll be like, what's this pink thing here? Um, those are the ventricles, choroid plexus, cerebral aqueduct we went through. All right, back to this brain. Olfactory nerve, olfactory bulb. Olfactory nerve here, olfactory bulbs. They're the fat part there. Remember the olfactory bulbs are right there in the top of the nasal passages. They sit there and they have the crystal galley. They put their receptors through. They can pick up smells. They're right there. And there's the olfactory nerve. Um, all right. We'll go on back to the spine, which we'll use this. All right. We've got, first of all, identified poster, anterior. So, we've got nerve roots. We've got posterior nerve roots, anterior nerve roots. These come off the spine. Then, we have um, anterior rami, big fat one here. This goes to everything in the front of the body. Posterior just goes to the back muscles and skin on the back. Okay, so this is the, the rami. We have the paraventricular ganglia. And um, let's see, we've got an epidural space. We've got the dura. Arconoid space, arconoid, and pia. And then, so that should be it on the central nervous system. We're going to continue on and talk a little bit about nerves.